Welcome back, and thanks for tuning in to episode 55 of Lab Padres SpaceX and Starbase Weekly Updates. I'm Lewis, your host. Now let's dig in. On Friday, a five-ring stack was rolled out of Mega Bay after likely being used to test and certify the second turntable and associated welding robot. A short time later, Booster 11's Common Dome section was moved into Mega Bay in preparation for initial stacking operations on the next Super Heavy. A LR-1160 crane arrived at the build site and was delivered to the far side of the Star Factory where crews began to assemble it. Overnight, work on the latest shielding for the orbital launch mount continued with additional panels being lifted for installation on the deck of the orbital launch mount. Early on Saturday morning, the newly arrived crane was raised next to the Star Factory where it began hammering in structural sheet piles. Late Sunday, Ship 26 rolled out of High Bay and then to the Rocket Garden where it was connected to the new LR-1750 crane and is awaiting its lift onto the new stand. Monday morning saw the installation of the final large panel of the new shielding that goes around the walkway around the side of the orbital launch mount. Late Tuesday, our Raptor Roost camera caught Ship 25 being cryotested at the Massey's test site, marking the first test for the new ship station that has recently been built at the site. Ship 28's nose cone and payload section was lifted onto the common dome in High Bay, which shows a change in the ship stacking process. Meanwhile, a new black rectangular steel structure was moved from mid-bay to high bay by a red Buckner LTR-1220 crane that arrived with the LR-1750. Late Wednesday morning, Booster 10's methane tank section was lifted into Mega Bay and moved over to the waiting LOX tank section for final stacking of the vehicle. On Thursday, the new second set of stairs that was being added to the launch mount were removed and driven down Highway 4 towards the SPMT storage yard. Switching over to Florida, Friday morning, Doug towed a short fall of Gravitas back into Port Canaveral with Booster B-1073 from the recent CRS-27 launch. By that afternoon, the dockside crane connected to the Falcon 9 booster and lifted it from the drone ship to the dock for processing. In the early hours of Monday morning, Bob returned to port after successfully recovering both fairing halves from the SES-18 and SES-19 launch. Later that morning, after three days in port, Doug towed a short fall of Gravitas out to sea in support of the Starlink Group 5-5 launch. Just hours later, Tug Crosby Skipper returned to port towing Just Read the Instructions with Falcon 9 Booster B-1069 standing on its deck. On Tuesday, the rocket was lifted off the drone ship and placed on the dock to be prepared for its trip back to Hangar X. Late Wednesday night, Relativity Space's Terran 1 rocket lifted off from Launch Complex 16. This inaugural launch started off well as the vehicle seemingly breezed through Max-Q, proving that the 80% by mass 3D printed rocket could handle the stresses of launch. Unfortunately, following an apparently successful stage separation, there was a failure with the second stage vacuum optimized Aeon 1 engine, causing the mission to fail well short of orbit. And there you have it, another SpaceX and Starbase weekly update brought to you by Lab Padre. We'll see you next week, and thanks for watching. Lab Padre, out.